Welcome to Let's Talk Ed and Zahi. We are talking about uh, upward mobility for for students that that go through and earn that degree, whether it's from a two year college or a four year college. And in our last show, we talked about how that uh, sometimes it ends up being a problem and doesn't always materialize in the way that that students think. So today what we're going to be talking about is how we build back that trust, not just with students, but also with uh, our employers and our communities. So uh, Zahi, with that, how do you build that trust? You know, I, I think we, uh, great question. Thanks for the hot right, yeah, 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 I left you a big one there. Yeah, uh, I think that we, we need to be aware of our impact. And we need to be aware of our status as part of the solution. And that means that we need to be looking at our course offerings and looking at our um, the debt that we are uh, saddling our students with. Uh, and, and all of those things are, are easily brushed and swept onto a rug when we say, well, come here, you're going to have a better life. And look at Jimmy John, who is now an astronaut and makes so much money. And look at Jane, who owns her own business as a multimillionaire. That is very true. We all can point to one or two uh, or a few examples uh, of success. And we're part of that success. Absolutely. But when the median, which is 50% of your students, are barely scraping by, uh, then are we really part of the solution? It doesn't mean that we're holding back the students, but perhaps we're not fully engaged with them. Um, but I'm also interested from your perspective as the person who crafts the message for the uh, potential students and, and markets it to them, their families, the employers and the community, how you, how you think about it. Yeah, so I think one of the things that that we need to look at is, you know, being very honest with what potential is there. Um, you know, it's really easy to look at a a career set and either pull out those outliers. So, you know, broadcasting, I I would hear about these big time broadcasters that were signing these multi million dollar contracts and. They were absolutely the exception. Uh, I remember in college, someone coming and talking to us and talking to us about entry level positions in TV. And there was somebody that got an entry level position in TV in St. Louis, making $15,000 an hour. Now, this is the late 90s, so things have changed. But, you know, think about that a little bit. $15,000 an hour. Uh, and, you know, at that time, I think all in tuition, room and board, all of that stuff, uh, you know, I was probably $25,000 a year plus. So, you know, right away, you're like, now, wait a minute, I just spent $100,000 on a degree that I'm going to start off making $15,000 an hour doing, um, so, you know, there's a, a little bit of being very honest and upfront, and this is what you can expect and and let people make decisions based off that information. I, you know, I still wanted to get into broadcasting. That's what I did. That was my passion. And I knew I wasn't going to get rich doing it. Uh, so, you know, it's the same with with education, teachers. You're not going to get rich being a teacher. Uh, you're not going to get rich going into early childhood, doing, you know, wildlife conservation, things like that, that a lot of people want to do. Uh, so you, I think you have to be really honest that this is what you can expect. Uh, now, one of the things that, that I think about from an employment end and, and Zahi, I'm going to ask you on, on this end. So we talk about working with employers and we reference that Harvard Business School study uh, in our last show that that found what 81% didn't trust institutions of higher ed with, with students. Um, what are some of the things that, that we need to do as higher education to earn that trust with the business community? Great question. Um, 
So it was specifically 81% of employers that were surveyed did not trust two-year colleges. So it's very narrow. Uh, you know, we, uh, we hear politicians all the time saying, well, stop creating those liberal arts majors and let's put them into manufacturing. Um, we even heard uh, at one State of the Union address, uh, President Obama specifically target people in art history uh, major. And he did say that, well, they're go he's going to hear from them. Um, and I appreciate that statement that, uh, that politicians uh, say. But if we look at our employment uh, currently, everybody's employed. And the idea that liberal arts does not lead to employment is, I think, problematic. So the way I would uh, talk about it with the employers is, um, is by first listening to their needs, right? Do they just want warm bodies? Well, they don't need college then, right? And so many of them are automating that that, that is uh, an option that's not available to, uh, to us humans any longer. But if they want the critical thinking, then we need to make sure we are providing those uh, critical thinking skills into our workforce, whether it is a career technical education program or whether it is not. It, uh, it is a transfer, for example, or liberal arts type education. If the employer is also looking at technical skills, let's look at what technical skills and what level they are looking at. And we, it's very common, at least from my experiences, to see teachers at two-year colleges, in particular, especially in CTE, uh, focusing on the lowest of the lowest skills. Well, if that's not what the employer wants, or if we're teaching for what used to be uh, cutting edge 10 years ago, then are we really being uh, part of that trust building with the employers. Similarly, we as a community need to realize that there are certain types of jobs that we need to show respect for and we shouldn't just wait for a pandemic uh, to show us the case. I'm talking about teaching, for example. I'm talking about early childhood education. All of a sudden, we all woke up that we have an issue with childcare. Well, where were we in 2010? Where were we in the 90s when we were slashing those programs right and left? And we all want to pay less for things if our children are our most valuable human element and asset, then why aren't we investing in them? Investing in them in terms of early childhood education and in terms of K-12 education. Again, this is not a, um, a political standpoint. This is a reminder that we are also part of that uh, problem resolution. Was, was that a, an answer to your question or... Yeah, absolutely. I yeah, no, I, I absolutely. And I think, you know, one of the things that, that I want to add to that is, you know, certainly a lot of times when we talk to employers, they're thinking about, you know, what do I need right now? Uh, you know, what are the, the, the things that I need when somebody gets that diploma and I go to hire them? What are the skills that I need? Uh, and I, I think one of the ways that we should frame that question is, you know, think about what you want, not just on day one from that person, but on, you know, year three, on year five. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, again, are, are you looking for somebody to start at the, you know, at, at an entry level position and work their way up in the organization? Or, you know, as you said, are you looking for someone that, you know, is going to film that warm body sort of slot and, you know, that's all we're thinking about. So I, I think that's a big part of it, too, because we need to be developing those skills just in general anyway, I think, so that, you know, our graduates have that ability to move up. So we've been talking about 
upward mobility uh, that you get from higher education. If you enjoy conversations like this, be sure and subscribe to us here on YouTube. Ring that bell down below. You'll be notified when we post new content. And uh, also, you can certainly like this video and uh, make a comment below that that helps us out in a very simple way. And you can find Let's Talk Ed on all of your favorite podcasting platforms as well. So for Dr. Zahi Atala, I'm Chris Ford. We'll see you next time right here on Let's Talk Ed.